Okay, this is quick screen level two. If you just watched level one, we left off with how to just save a simple screen and uh, retrieve it for later on. Okay, so now we're gonna get into learning the data structure. And I know that's <laughs> that sounds so awful and boring, but it's actually not that bad. Uh, and it's really important if you wanna build good uh, personal screens. So please stick with us on that. Uh, know the difference between growth and change, uh, how to get data from multiple time frames, maybe we'll build a complex screen and then getting bulk data uh, for downloading and, and analyzing further. Okay, there we go. Let's uh, just trust me, data structure, this is probably really important, but a little bit uh, tedious. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, first of all, we went over the categories. Let's uh, get rid of this a little bit. We went over the categories previously on the, on the last one. So here's all the different categories we can choose from. Country, keyword, and then we put in a keyword here, and um, all these different categories, okay? And so each one of them has a kind of bunch of data under them. Um, general's not too complicated, it's just market uh, cap, volume, and uh, the different sectors, okay? No big deal. Starts to get a little more complicated when you see this. Uh, oops, let's go down to actual return on capital here. And it, it expands up, and you see a huge list here. And it can be kind of intimidating. It's like, oh my God, I don't want to learn this. Um, but you should. Um, and it's really not nearly as complex as you might think. So it might be hard to see a little bit, but it's there. Is there's just this tiny little gap, and then a uh, few variables down, another little gap, a few variables down, another little gap. And you just see these little gaps, and it's because, again, we break it up. And you can see it's broken up into cash flow IRR, excluding intangibles, cash flow IRR, including intangibles, ROE, ROA, and ROIC. So, you know, at the high level, there's only six variables in, um, in this return on capital category. And then you see all this crazy nomenclature and it's intimidating. You see FY, TFQ, ANQ, and then TFQ versus SQPY. And it's like, well, oh my God, I don't want to, I don't want to dive there or go there. But it's not really that hard. Okay. The first, let's just look at the first three. So cash flow IRR, we know what that is. We're excluding intangibles in this case. And even before I go further, you'll notice once, once I learn this top one, well, I know what the other ones are because it's a pattern. It just repeats itself, okay? So it's just the same thing over and over. So that won't be too bad, right? Well, let's look at the first one. Cash flow, IR, cash flow that's really actually hard to say. Cash flow IRR, excluding intangibles, percent. So we say what it's going to be. It's a percent. And then in brackets is the time frame. So fiscal year. Oh, okay, well that's not hard, right? Fiscal year. Okay, what's the next one? Cash flow IRR, excluding intangibles, percent again, of course. Um, <coughs> trailing four quarters, that's what TFQ stands for. And then one more. Cash flow IRR, excluding intangibles, percent. ANQ. ANQ means annualized uh, quarter. Annualized quarter. So instead of taking the trailing, we're going to take the current multiply by four to annualize it, okay? So that's it for kind of the top three. They're just, they're just different cuts of different data, right? So fiscal, trailing, or annualized, that's it. Okay, and then we get into the change. And change means, you know, going from a 10% to a 12% is a 2% change, right? So and it's no different than going from an eight to a 10. It's also two percent change. We don't call that we don't call that growth. We actually call it change because it's already in a percent. So you don't really grow from. Uh, you could say you grow from, you know, eight percent return to ten percent return. You could use that, but we wanted to distinguish between growth and change. So change is just a subtraction. So ten minus eight is two, positive two. Growth means. You know, you have a certain amount of revenue. You have a hundred million in revenue, and you go to one hundred twenty million in revenue. Well, that's twenty percent growth. Okay, so there's there's just a small distinction. We didn't subtract. We did the growth formula. Okay, so now this is really important. 
When you talk about change or growth, you need two pieces of data. You need the ending data and the beginning. So you can't calculate change or growth without two pieces of data. So we have the first one is cash RR excluding intangibles change percent fiscal year. Well, we just thought we didn't need to add anything to that because it's just obvious versus the previous fiscal year. So we could, to make it even more obvious, in this bracket say versus fiscal year minus one, right? So it's versus or the previous fiscal year, something like that. Um, but that's obvious. Okay. It's not as obvious when you're using quarters because you could compare it to, like if we're in Q4, well, do I compare it to the previous Q4 or do I compare it to Q3? So we have to make that distinction. And so we say trailing four quarters versus the same quarter the previous year. So that would mean go back four quarters, you know, Q4 to Q4, Q3 to Q3, Q2 to Q2. And then trailing four quarters versus the previous quarter. So that's Q4 versus Q3, Q3 versus Q2, Q2 versus Q1, Q1 versus the previous Q4, you know, like, et cetera. So that's it there. And then it's the same thing for annualizing quarter. Um, so it all keeps going in this pattern throughout the entire data structure. Okay, so once you understand that, you've understood the whole database, literally. Because um, cash wire excluding intangibles is identical to including intangibles. ROE is identical, same data structure. ROA is the same data structure, ROIC. And it's the same thing for say, let's go to revenue, revenue growth, okay? So uh, now the only difference is it's growth. So we actually, like I said before, we're gonna use, you know, if it's a 100 million going to 120 million, we don't say it's revenue growth of 20 million, we say it's 20%, it grew 20%. And, um, you know, so that's, that's the difference between growth and change. Change is subtraction, growth is the growth formula. Okay, and again, there's just a pattern over and over. Whoops, whoa, whoa. okay, slow down there. Uh, revenue, EBITDA per share, cash flow IR, per, or just cash flow per share. Same pattern over and over and over. Fiscal year, trailing four quarters, annualized quarter. Uh, growth, fiscal year, same quarter previous year, et cetera, et cetera. It's just the same thing, repeated, repeated, repeated. And you just keep seeing this over and over and over, okay? So whatever variable, it might be dividends. Dividends grow, right? So there's a growth pattern. Here it is again, dividend growth. Ba boom, same pattern, okay? So you now, you virtually understand every, the whole database, like, uh, you know, I'm not gonna go through every single one, but you'll just, you know, you'll look at it and you'll go, oh, okay, well, uh, capital. Okay. Oh, asset growth. Oh, okay. I know what that. I know how that works. Yeah, et cetera. Okay. So, um, yeah. Okay. This is level two, uh, multiple time frames. Okay. Yeah. Well, that comes up to our next thing. So we want to screen on a variable. Let's use um, return on invested capital. And I'm going to do fiscal year. And you'll see this comes up over here now. So the fiscal year is up. And you actually see five different fiscal years. So that's a time frame to us, five different years. And, you know, maybe you want somebody that earned a 10%. Well, because we're only, we only clicked off the first fiscal year, which is like the last fiscal year, um, we go screen that and we'll see how many meet that criteria. And it's 828, but that's only in the last fiscal year. I could just click this all button and screen them all. And now it's every year for the last, or sorry, for five years. So that's much more stringent, right? Like you, you might have met it this last fiscal year, but the year before you were not as good. So let's see. And you, obviously you would do this to screen for consistent companies. Okay, yeah. And uh, that cut, cut it in almost half. It's 448 companies. The previous screen with just the one year um, gave us 800 something. Okay, so it's kind of not too bad with fiscal year. When you do a quarterly, we have much more data because quarters, you know, multiply by four. 
So let's do one uh, trailing four quarters right here. And you see this expands way out to tw minus 23. So it's actually 24 quarters, right? Which is six years, correct? So because the trailing four quarters is kind of like time zero. And then 23 more gives us a total of 24 to six years. And we could do all here and uh, we'll say 10%. So this should be even smaller because it's every quarter for six years. No misses, no mistakes. And I don't know how many, only 287. That's still not bad actually. I'm surprised there's that many, but uh, okay. So that's multiple time frames. And again, there's tons of variables that do that. And they, for some of the variables like market cap, you see there is no time frame. It's just, what is it now? We're not gonna screen on what was it 10 years ago or five years ago. We don't, nobody really does that. I mean, you could, I guess. Okay, so that's where we, yeah, we could, I'm not gonna go too much into this, but we could build, a, as you can imagine, a really complex screen. So we have, a, you know, earns 10% for every quarter. Uh, then you could do change. Um, so change versus the previous quarter. Now remember, uh, what I, yeah, so I always do usually positive change because I'm looking for companies that are getting better. Now this is where you gotta be careful not to put in too many time frames because if I say, you know, improves even by 1%, every quarter for six years, what's well, 24 quarters. So even if you're starting at zero cash flow IRR, um, we have 24, by the time we get to the end, you'll have to have earning a 24, because, uh, or sorry, that's if you earn at least a 1%, right? If you earn, yeah, so if you earn at least 1%, the, by the time, you know, so, so sorry, you start at zero, and then it has to improve because that's what we're saying, the change has to be positive one. So you have to go to one, then you have to go to two, then you have to go to three, because we're saying that for every year, right? Hope that makes sense. And it, that, that's where it gets a little complex, but if you just think about what change is, um, you know, I'm gonna say 1% per year, 1% every quarter, see nobody made that. Not one single company improved their cash flow IR by 1% every year. Let's just say, or every quarter, Let's say zero, so it never, never went down at least. So it might just go up half a percent or less than half a percent. And let's see, does anybody, still nobody. So that's really too stringent. Um, let's say no worse than minus one. So hopefully mostly positive. And see this gets confusing too with greater than minus one. You gotta, you gotta have your, your thinking cap on here. Actually 54 companies. Uh, and I'd say those are pretty consistent companies. No worse than minus one. Most of the time, probably positive. Okay. Okay, these are complex. And uh, so then you get all this data and you can imagine some of the math you can do off offline. So you can download this data. And this is how I do all my testing for when I say something is statistically significant. Well, it's because I've downloaded, you know, I mean, there's so much data in here. Six years of quarters and testing for anything I want. Uh, I do it in Excel and uh, you can get some really interesting results. Okay, so that is complex. That was a long video, but it's a, uh, it's, it warrants it. It's a tough, it's a, it's a great product uh, for a quant person, I think, to uh, take a look at that. All right, we're gonna end that there and uh, really appreciate you sitting through that one.